What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, May 4th, May 24th. Uh, this is our video review of all the trades and alerts for this week. I apologize if the audio is not uh, the greatest quality. I'm actually uh, in the Lake of the Ozarks for the weekend, long holiday weekend, no trading on Monday. By the way, uh, Lake of the Ozarks is a big lake in Missouri and a place where a lot of people go for the holidays. And uh, if you haven't checked out the video series on Netflix called Ozark, check it out. It's a, it's a good one. And it's all about the Lake of the Ozarks where we're at this weekend. So hope everybody else has a great Memorial Day weekend as well. Uh, but let's jump into the stuff for this week, starting with uh, in the community who got caught being hot this week. Uh, this week is uh, goes to a newer member named Ross S is what he goes by in the community. He's jumped in, started trading, share, uh, sharing trade ideas and getting involved in the community. So love seeing newer members getting, getting involved. It helps everybody. The more that you share it, more that it helps you as well as everybody else benefits from the ideas and suggestions and comments. So congrats, Ross, keep up the good work. And, uh, Anytime we hand out a Who Got Caught Being Hot Award, you get some navigation swag. So you get a Trade Hacker t-shirt or a mug or whatever you want. So congrats, keep that up. All right, let's jump into the alerts for the week, uh, starting with the 20th of May, which was Monday. And the first was a closing trade in NVIDIA. So we had a short call vertical in NVIDIA. We had to make a couple adjustments. Uh, ended up uh, continued that lower, uh, lower movement in NVIDIA. Uh, in price and we went ahead and booked a small profit overall in that NVIDIA trade. So we're out of that one. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in SPY. So we added an iron condor in SPY. IB percentile jumped up. It was at the 70 level when we put this on. Uh, I mentioned we, we made these wings uh, five strikes wide. So we did less contracts, made it a little bit wider than our kind of standard three strike wide iron condor in SPY. And what that did, it just increased the probability of profit a little bit and the credit. And so I just like the risk reward in, in that setup a little bit better. So you can always just tweak those to what, what fits best for you, but that's what we liked here. So if we take a look at SPY, let's jump over here and take a look. So we've got, uh, we've got two different pieces in here. We've got this short call vertical spread that we rolled from June to July just to keep some of that short delta exposure in our portfolio. And then we've also got this iron condor from the alert that I just mentioned. And you can see it's pretty dead centered. We're up some profit in that, uh, but just waiting for some more before we, before we take anything off or do anything else. Now, as far as our, our short delta uh, ratio, so we always like to keep about between one to one and five to one in short delta. So we want our, uh, our portfolio to be short biased to help from those uh, sharp down moves like we've seen recently. And it's definitely benefited us for having that. And, uh, and so we, but we like to, we don't wanna be too short. So the, the way that we look at that is our short delta beta weighted to SPY versus the amount of theta that we have. So we like to be in that kind of one to one ratio as, as high as five to one ratio and we were we were pretty close to that five to one ratio just a couple weeks ago, and now we're basically delta neutral. So anytime you have a sharp down move like we've like we've seen, sucks up a lot of that short delta. Obviously, gives you that profit for having that short delta. Uh, but now we're pretty delta neutral. So we will be looking to potentially add a little bit of short delta. We don't want to over adjust or overdo it. So really, over the next couple weeks, just kind of slowly add it in, and uh, and get back to a a, a nice range on our ratio there. So that's where we're at overall. Uh, let's take a look at the next trade alert, which is an opening adjusting trade in SMH. So this is a, a, a trade we went ahead and added a short strangle, implied volatility popped up to 87 on the percentile. So we sold some premium there in SMH. Uh, we, took, we, we put this on on the 20th on Monday and we just took it off today. So just in the trade for a few days, booked over 30% of max profit on that trade. Now we still have another piece to that trade on, which is this slightly inverted short strangle. And you can see price is hanging out here in the lower end of the range. So if price starts moving down again next week 
and that'll probably push implied volatility higher. We'll probably add another centered strangle around this and just keep adding, booking, adding, taking them off, adding, taking profits. That's the name of the game. And, uh, and until we you know, are profitable in this trade. And so that's the plan in SMH. If you look at the chart, you can see implied volatility is still nice and high. So if we get a, if this kind of gives us a little bit of a continuation to the downside, applied volatility will pop, making those ex uh, options more expensive. We'll sell a little bit of premium to take advantage of that. So that's where we're at in SMH. Next trade, a opening trade. We bought a vertical in Boeing uh, just to add some short delta exposure. And we were looking, we, we had actually yesterday, we had, we were at 50% of max profit. I had a tr uh, an order in even away from that price, trying to get some more because things were, I mean, things were going down quickly. So there was a, a good reason to think that it would continue to the downside. Unfortunately, it never hit our order. And then Boeing uh, yesterday and today reversed a little bit and have come all the way back. And so let's take a look at where we're at. Let's look at the chart first. So yeah, we were down here yesterday and then, and then all of a sudden, boom, it reversed back up and now we're all the way back up here. Unfortunately, we did not get out of that one, partly because we want to hold on to uh, some additional short delta. I was taking off, I was rolling the spies. I was taking off some of the other short delta plays because we were profitable. Uh, this, is, this is one that we just kind of kept on for a little bit more profit. Unfortunately, it reversed on us and that, that's just trading. That's just how things happen sometimes. Now, nothing says this can't continue back to the downside into next week. And if that does, we'll, we'll be in good shape on that one. And we're still in de decent shape. Price is still well within range. We got a tiny bit of profit here, but we are way down here and unfortunately did not get it taken off, didn't get our order filled. So that's where we're at. Now, keep in mind, because I had a couple of questions about this in the, in the community. So we said, hey, we're at 50% of max profit. Shouldn't we take this off? And everybody's portfolio is a little bit different. So your short delta in your portfolio is going to be different than mine. And everybody's is going to be a little bit different. So I don't want you to use our alerts to try to mimic exact fills and exact trades. The goal is to understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, and manage those based on your risk profile, based on your preference, based on your portfolio. So, you know, if it was a situation where this was at 50% of max profit, you know that's a good place to take these off from an overall probability stance, but it matters how it fits into your portfolio as well. So keep that in mind. Don't, don't necessarily always wait for the alert if you're in a position where you think it's a good time to take it off or it's a good fit for your portfolio because what be, might be good for you may not be the best for us and vice versa. So just keep that in mind. We're, we wanna teach you how to fish here. We wanna teach you how to manage your portfolio and we're showing you what we're doing but all the exact fills and, and exact timing is not, ne uh, not necessarily uh, the key. It's, it's just how to manage it. Uh, so that's where we're at in BA. Next trade, closing trade in XBI. We had an iron condor on, booked over 30% of max profit in just 11 days there. So good trade in XBI. And let's, like, let's look at the chart in XBI. Um, implied volatility has is, is, uh, been high in there. It's starting to come down here, but if we get a little pop higher, we may look to re-enter with a new centered trade in XBI next week. Uh, by the way, and, and we will be looking to add positions. We, we've got, a, after taking off a lot of positions, price coming back into our range, booking profits, uh, we are in a good shape to add some more positions. We've got a lot of cash in our account right now. I think we're only using about $30,000 in buying power. So definitely could use some additional uh, positions here going into next week and uh, hopefully we get another little pop in implied volatility which always makes it better next trade closing trade in EWZ so we had a short strangle another one of these that were taken off booked over 35 percent of max profit in just eight days on that one so great trade in EWZ next trade opening trade in Qualcomm so uh, did a new short strangle uh, looking for 30 to 50 percent of max profit there Applied volatility spiked with a huge drop in the stock. Uh, let's take a look at Qualcomm. Uh, excuse me, that's QQQ. Qualcomm. Uh, so you, after you see that after that news came out about uh, them using their materials for Apple iPhones, it just skyrocketed and kind of stayed steady, and then boom, dropped about 10% in one day. So that made implied volatility spike. We want to take advantage of that by selling premium. 
And that's what we've got here. We've got this short strangle. You can see prices hanging out right here. No profit or loss at this point. Just waiting for some more time to pass, some more theta to decay in Qualcomm. Next trade, closing trade in XRT. So we had a long put, which we don't do a lot. We don't buy a lot of options. Sometimes we'll do uh, long calls pre-earnings because we get that implied volatility expansion. In this case, uh, XRT is a lower price stock. You could have done a short call vertical. You could have done a long put vertical. We ended up just buying a put. Kept it simple, uh, booked over 45% on the trade in just seven days on that one. Next trade, closing trade in EEM. So we closed out our remaining short call vertical. We started with an iron condor, made several adjustments, had a short call vertical in EEM. Price came down nicely, booked that, took a nice profit out of EEM overall after all adjustments. So we are out of EEM. You can see we closed out of a lot of positions this week, which is, which is good. Reduces that risk exposure and gives us a chance to reload, uh, uh, redeploy that capital into other high probability trades. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in SPY. So we had a short call vertical that's originally part of an iron condor, and we wanted to keep that for short delta in our portfolio. So we just rolled that from June out to July. We were well over 50% of max profit on that piece. So we just wanted to extend duration, keep that short delta. And, and so that's where we're at with SPY. Uh, I think I already showed you the, yeah, there, there's the iron condor. And then here is the short call vertical that we rolled. And so you can see price is still in range here, pretty close to where we rolled it. So just looking for some more downside in that piece to benefit. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Intel. So we had a short strangle that we put on after earnings in Intel because the implied volatility stayed elevated. Uh, it's made a, a pretty decent sized move down. We rolled down the calls. And then we needed to roll down the calls again. And, and we ended up just rolling this out from June to July at the same time. So we rolled down our calls from 50, excuse me, from 49 down to 45, kept our put at 50. So now we're short the 45 calls and short the 50 puts in July. So let's take a look at Intel. Let's come up a little bit today and a little bit yesterday since, since we've done that roll. So coming back into range nicely, we've got back some profits since that roll. So just going to continue to stay man, uh, continue to stay mechanical there. Uh, next trade, closing adjusting trade in oil. Our good friend CL. So uh, for those who've been with us for a little bit, you remember last year, oil made a massive move, and we were down pretty big on this trade. Uh, but you just you got to stay mechanical as long as the position size is small enough, which is the key. You can manage out of these trades, and that's what we've been doing in oil. So we had two different sets of short strangles. Uh, we closed out one of them with a huge move down in oil. And let's go to a chart real quick, show you what I'm looking at. And yeah, just, I mean, boom, 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 you know, three days in a row down. I mean, that's how quickly things can change. And, uh, and so we took one of those off and that completely reduces our, not completely, that reduces our exposure, reduces our, our risk by 50% because we had two different sets on. We took one of them off and went ahead and booked in that. We're now profitable. I think we're up about five or 600 bucks on the oil trade in total. So we'll, uh, I want implied volatility is still nice and high. This one's fairly centered and it's getting up there. Now, after you make these adjustments and rolls, you know, managing at 50% uh, is not necessarily what we look like, look for. We're actually, we're trying to get back to profitability, which we are now. I just wanted to let this give a little bit more theta decay. Implied volatility has been spiking all week. Now it's uh, contracting a little bit today, which is great. So giving us even a little bit more profit. You can see we've got you know almost $50 a day in theta here. So I just wanna hold this over the weekend. Hopefully we get a little more theta sucked out over the weekend uh, on, you know, Mon uh, we've got fr today's Friday. So we got Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then we'll see what happens Tuesday. Obviously if it moves down a little bit, that's okay too. Or if it continue, if price moves higher, we'll get a nice, contraction and implied volatility and either of those will benefit as long as it doesn't make too big of a move either way so that's what we're looking at in oil and then if we get out of that we might uh, look to re-enter and redeploy as well so in good shape there and then the last trade today was a closing adjusting trade in smh so i already mentioned that we had we put that other that short strangle on earlier this week and booked over 30 percent of max profit in just four days and then we're just holding that other piece of SMH. 
So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with ES. We've got this long put vertical. You can see prices right here. And we're at, you know, right a little over 50% of max profit. Just really, this has just been a kind of a hedge holding this for short delta. We've rolled this over the cycles, just keeping that short delta exposure in our portfolio. This is in the cycle with, I think, 29, yeah, 28 days to expiration. So uh, we'll look to potentially roll. If, it, if price stays steady to lower, we'll look to roll this out next week and just kind of extend that duration, keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio. And then uh, Natty Gas. So we've got two pieces here, and you can see price is hanging out near the lower end of the range here. We've got two different pieces. They're pretty, pretty close to identical. On the call side, we've got 2.7, 2.75, and then on the put side, we're using the exact same strike of three. So you can see there's two contracts on the three put. So we just need some upside movement in Natty Gas. And if you look at the value in the calls, you know, still got plenty of value. So if this thing continues lower, we're not gonna make any adjustments too soon, uh, depending on how quickly it moves, but that's where we're at in Nat Gas. Bonds, uh, this, was, this one was a little bit frustrating. I had an order in when price was dead centered earlier this week, and I think a couple people I saw got out, uh, booked a profit in bonds. Unfortunately, we never, never got filled. I wasn't trying to chase it, and then price just ran away. So unfortunately, we did not get out of that one. Hopefully prices will stay steady to lower, and we can still book a profit in ZB, you can see price just kind of shot up away from where we were trying to get filled. Unfortunately, again, that happens. Um, next, uh, next position, wheat. Uh, so you can see we've got an iron condor on in wheat. Price is just hanging out right here in the kind of the upper end of the range. And so we're just playing the waiting game there. I mentioned BA, DIA, we've got an iron condor, got some profit there. Uh, a couple of people already took theirs off for a nice 40% of max. Uh, we're just holding on to this, uh, trying to get a little bit more theta decay before we do anything there. FXI, which is the Chinese large cap ETF. Price is hanging out in the lower end of the range. Could use a little bit of up movement in FXI to benefit that. Obviously, we got the trade wars going on, which is kind of elevating that, that implied volatility. And so just looking for some two-sided action there. Uh, if we, we may look to add to this one. Uh, so if price kind of continues or stays around here, We'll, we'll look to add another centered iron condor. This current position is in June, so we'll go ahead and add that one out in July, collect some more credit, and keep moving forward. Intel, I mentioned, IWM, we've got this iron condor. Same thing here, if uh, price kind of continues lower here, we'll, we'll adjust by taking off the untested side and add another centered iron condor uh, in IWM. So that's, uh, that's the plan there. IYR, the real estate ETF. I thought we were going to be able to get out of this one, but uh, real estate was not participating in as much of the down move as the rest of the market. So price hanging out up here, kind of a similar situation. We will potentially add another centered iron condor around price if, if it continues higher. <clears throat> if we take a look at the charts, well, look at implied volatility. It's just gotten crushed the last few days. So in that case, we may not look to add. We'll just continue to manage the one we have. Cree, K-R-E, this is a, uh, it's the um, brokerage ETF. And if we uh, look at here, we've got a short strangle. Now in the course we teach, you know, if price comes down and breaches the short strike, then we want to roll the untested side down. Uh, the reason I haven't yet is if you just, really the, what we're looking for is, you know, very little value left. Now, we are, we're close to that point, and there is no, I have no issue with anyone who wanted to go ahead and adjust this by rolling the calls down to collect some more credit. Uh, in this case, we're just, we're just holding. You know, we did a lot of adjustments this week, and so we like to spread those out over time, and this is one we just chose to kind of hold and wait. Obviously, if price rips back higher, we'll be in good shape. Uh, if it does stay here to lower, we'll roll down that call side, collect some more credit, we're in June on this position, so 28 days. If we do make that roll down, this is the other thing. We're kind of in that zone where, you know, I don't want to roll down in June because once we get down to 21 days to expiration, we'll be rolling out again anyway. Uh, so if I do make that roll down, I'll also roll out from June to July. And so that's why I'm just kind of, I'm not in a hurry to make that roll at this point, just kind of playing the waiting game there. I mentioned Qualcomm, QQQ. NASDAQ ETF, we've got two different sets of short call verticals. You can see price is nicely in range. 
We've made uh, some profit on these little pieces of the trade. We've just been keeping this on for that short delta exposure. So just looking for some more downside to benefit that. Both of these are in June. So if price continues lower next week, we'll roll it. We'll book that and roll at least one of these out to July, uh, depending on where we're at with everything. So that's the plan in the queues. Mentioned SPY. XLK, we've got this uh, long put vertical. Kind of another one of those in the similar situation where we're over 50% of max profit, uh, but we, we've just been holding this one because we've still got some good downside left. And so if we do get that, we'll go ahead and book what we've got and probably roll this out to July to keep that short delta exposure. And lastly, XLV, the healthcare ETF. You can see price is just hanging out right here. Uh, so we just need a little bit more time to pass, some more theta to decay to benefit that trade. If we look at a chart of XLV, see we've been getting that nice contraction, but this, this grind higher is just putting us in a point of our range where we're not quite profitable yet. So if we could get a little bit of downside, a little bit of theta decay, that's what we need. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Hope everybody has a great long weekend. Uh, no alerts on Monday, markets are closed. So we'll see you back on Tuesday. Have a great one.